Hey, YouTube, it's Aiden slash Burger Bob, whatever you want to call me. Um, our next brand in the NAM series here, the next one that I went to at the show, is Buffet Crampon. This is the parent company, kind of like Con Selmer, but in Europe, of a bunch of different brands, including Courtois, um, B and S, I'm not sure what those stand for, and Besson. Those are the brands that I played at the show, so those are the only ones that really matter here. And as always, a little disclaimer, I work for two drum corps, Pacific Crest, sponsored by Jupiter, and um, Cadets, sponsored by Yamaha. And my views here do not represent either of those organizations. Also, I play Bach instruments almost entirely, and so don't get me wrong, I'm trying to be impartial here. So, on to Buffet Crampon. Um, I walked in and I played the Courtois AC502 bass. I think it's just AC502, maybe AC502BH? No, B something? No, I think that's it. AC502. Anyway, this is their, like, um, first level professional bass trombone, as far as I can tell. I'm not sure if they make a level below this. Um, this is just the double rotor, independent, bass drum with, like, a, I think it had a gold bell and just a yellow slide and a nickel crook. Nothing super special about it. I thought that it was really, really easy to play, had quick valves, an amazing slide, like one of the best slides I've ever used in my entire life, much less at a show, like kind of mind-blowingly good slide. And I thought it was very boring. I mean, just kind of not a lot of character in the sound. Um, like, it was fun playing it because it was easy, but not fun playing it because it was rewarding, I guess. Um, I think it would be a good instrument for, like, a school program maybe, or if it, you're a doubler. I'm not sure. I just I had, like, no thoughts about it. I thought it was easy to play, and then I just kind of got bored, I guess. So well-built, um, great slide, quick valves, easy to play, and just... Not very interesting. Next, th uh, next thing I played was the B and S Meister Singer, Meister Singer, um, tenor trombone. I think this is developed by Karl Lente, who is a German teaching at Indiana University. He played in a bunch of German orchestras and stuff, um, and he developed this with B and S. Um, it's all gold brass, I think. I think, I don't think it was red, I think it was gold brass um, with nickel fittings everywhere, nickel uh, slide, um, nickel like tuning slide tubes um, and fitments. Uh, I'm not sure what the, I think the slide was also gold slash red brass, whatever it was. Um, man, this horn was just awesome. It really reminded me of the Leitch tenors that I played at ITF, which had a very similar actual um, like construction. It was all kind of similar to that and the wrap and the valve. All that stuff was very similar to that. And I just, like, I'm not sure if I could ever use one of these instruments, but if you needed a German-style kind of Con 88H copy um, to play in that style, man, these horns are where you should go because it felt so good to play. If I played um, solo tenor trombone, this might be an instrument I would look at because, man, it was just awesome. I'm not sure how it would work in the U.S. in a section, uh, in an orchestra, but, man, I love this instrument. I'm pretty sure they're super expensive, but, man, I kind of want one. Um, it was that good. Like, maybe in a quintet it would sound cool. I'm trying to find excuses to get one. Uh, anyway, I moved on to the Courtois AC420BH. AC420 is um, Courtois' code for this is a Bach 42 that we made. They also have the AC440, I think, which is, of course, half of 88, which is a copy of the Con 88. Um, Courtois' uh, AC420s are all very good Bach 42 copies, and they are pretty faithful about their copies. They're not, they're not really like changing everything to make it better or anything like that. They they definitely do some of that. But like on the AC420, just the standard closed draft rotor model, all the braces are in the same place. All the ferrules are like the exact same thing. I mean, they just, they kind of try to go all out and do the same exact thing that Bach is doing, but built better with maybe better materials. I'm not really sure. 
Um, and they're really good instruments. The AC420BH has um, a Hagman valve. So in Bach terms, this is a 42A, the 42 is a Hagman valve. And this 420BH, as with last year at NAMM, was one of the best tenor trombones I have ever played in my entire life. Holy crap. This is just, I'm like, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. This horn was so easy to play. Had so much character to the sound. Just huge, great articulations, easy range everywhere, super well built. The valve was like fire. It has the new Hagman valve, um, which was just debuted in like the last few months, I think, with just a couple changes to the Hagman. Um, man, this horn was just awesome. I This is like would be my first choice if I needed like a brand new orchestral tenor trombone um, as far as I can tell this is this is like the end this is what you get to when you want to play tenor trombone wow just completely blown away by this instrument um, all in all the buffet crompon buffet I'm saying it wrong now where is it where is it I've written down buffet crampon trombones kind of were all really really good and I was very pleasantly surprised last year they only had the AC 420 BH and it was also amazing. I was much worse at tenor trombone, so I didn't really appreciate it. But this year, I did. Um, sadly, they did not have the new Paul Pollard model or anything like that. So I didn't get to play their top-level bass trombones. I would really like to play some of those. Um, and I didn't get the chance. I only went the one day, and I think they brought one in another day. Um, uh, Buffet Crompon also owns Besson, who makes... Euphoniums, and they make tubas, but I only play the euphoniums. Um, obviously, best and euphoniums are kind of a standard, so I wanted to play all of them, see what they were like. The I started with the Prestige 2052. Um, I'm not sure on the difference between the 2052 and the 2051. It's a bell-sized thing, but I can't remember which one is bigger and which one's smaller. I think the 2 has the larger bell. Anyway, I thought it was a really good instrument. Great valves, pretty good ergon ergonomics. The Prestige has a tuning slide trigger, which I kind of do like. I don't know if I would use it all the time. It's really well built. Um, really good sounds. I love my Yamaha 842, but in order to get like a really like characteristic sound on it, I kind of have to try really hard and do lots of stuff. And on the Bessons, you just kind of chill out, plug in a Dennis Wick 3AL or 4AL, and just make amazing euphonium sounds and that's what the prestige is there to do for you know ten thousand dollars the prestige 2051 was amazing i think this is the smaller bell version and i i don't even know what the different bell sizes really do for euphonium but you know there's people who really care about this stuff um i thought this horn was actually better than the 2052 um these horns are also pretty well in tune i think the sixth partial is a little sharp on bessons for my taste but they have the tuning side trigger so you don't really have to worry about it. I also played the next line down, the Sovereign, which is their kind of like the previous top model of Bessons, which they've made for like 50 years in one way or another. Um, I played the 968, which I can't, I do not know if that's a, the large bell or small bell version, because there's the 967, 968. Um, the 968 was not good. It had a bad smell, which means that it, it had just been put together and you could still smell like the manufacturing stuff inside the instrument. Um, and when I played tuning B-flat, it resonated so much that it vibrated in my mouthpiece against my face, which is something I've never felt before, honestly. It was kind of interesting, a new massage feature. Um, but I, I like played a couple notes and put that one down because it felt really bad. So, you know, strike one against Buffet Crampon, I guess. And then I played the Sovereign 967, which I think is the small bell version, you guys will know, and you'll tell me in the comments and whatever. Anyway, I played the 967. Wow, what an awesome instrument. Um, the Prestige is based on the Sovereign, and they just kind of fix the issues they have with the Sovereign, tuning things and ergonomics and stuff. But the Sovereign was the standard for compensating euphoniums for so long. And this instrument, this particular 967, showcase that to the nth degree it was awesome 
just uh, like probably the best sounding euphonium maybe that I've ever played. Like I could just tell behind the bell. I played, um, and I haven't said this yet, but I played all the euphoniums. I played uh, Beadlow, which is a solo from Pictures at an Exhibition. And this one just sang on it. I can sound really good on my euphonium playing the same thing, but wow. I I was just blown away by this horn. All the ranges were good. It wasn't stuffy below the staff like some sovereigns can be, I think. I've heard that. And I think this was maybe my favorite euphonium at the show. And I played a lot of euphonium. So, um, Buffet Crampon doing really good stuff. Just a quick overview. I mean, their trombones were amazing. One boring bass trombone, but I'm not going to hold them accountable for that. Um, one badly built euphonium, but the others were all really good and some of the best at the entire show. So, good job, Buffet Crampon. <laughs> 